Good morning and welcome back to section five of chapter four. In this section, we're going to be looking at the other four trig functions. Last section, we were looking at the graphs of sine and cosine. We're going to use those to look at the graphs of the tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Now, with sine and cosine, the sinusoidal graphs, those are hugely useful. We, we model a lot of things with them. Tangent has some uses, and so we'll look at that as one of our basic graphs. The other three we don't use so much, and even with tangent, we don't we don't do as much with these four that we do with sine and cosine, specifically with all of the different transformations. Yes, we do use some transformations, but they're usually fairly basic. We don't get the, the crazy ones where we do the vertical stretch and the phase shift and the horizontal stretch um, and the vertical shift. Um, it, it's usually like one or two, but I'll show you how to deal with any of those. So our learning targets for today, we're going to graph tangents, cotangents, secants, and cosecant functions. That's the biggest one. Um, analyze the graphs of them. Um, that would be looking at the graphs what kind of um, what kind of transformation happened based on the graph? Was it shifted over? And so that's more of a comparison to um, the parent function graph type thing. Um, describe the transformations necessary to obtain graphs from basic trigonometric graphs. Same idea. Um, solve equations for angles um, in given intervals by using reference triangles. Uh, and solve equations for angles in given intervals by using technology. Um, that would be graph them and then find the intersection point. We've been doing that for years with different types of graphs. It's the exact same. You just graph it, figure out where they intersect. So tangent. The first one that we start with, um, if we remember tangent of x is sine over cosine. Tangent sine over cosine. So that's going to be huge because we can use those sine and cosine values to find, to figure out tangent. So if I have my sine and cosine, sine is red, cosine is blue. I shouldn't have used red. Let's see, hmm. let's use green for tangent. Um, we can figure out what some of these values are. Some of them are going to be pretty easy because when sine equals zero, cosine is going to be one or negative one. What's zero divided by one or negative one? It's zero. So when sine is zero, tangent is also going to be zero. So at all of those points, the tangent is zero. All right, well, what about when cosine is zero? When cosine is zero, sine is either one or negative one. So what's one or negative one divided by zero? Oh, well, we get problems there because dividing by zero is generally frowned upon. But in a graph, what does that divided by zero do? It makes a vertical asymptote. So when cosine equals zero, we're going to have vertical asymptotes. So we have vertical asymptotes there. And there, and there, this one pen wasn't working, and here, and here. So those are all of the odd pi over twos. They're the pi over twos that don't reduce, right? Because even pi over twos, like two pi over two is just pi. So they're the odd pi over twos, one pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, things like that. All right, well now let's see, we're dividing um, sine divided by cosine. Well, when they're equal, like right here, that's going to be one. They're equal here, so that's going to be one. They're equal here, so that's going to be one. Let's see, they're equal here, so that's going to be one. Notice even when they're both negative and they're equal, it equals one because the negative divided by a negative is that positive. One and one. Well, over here, they're equal, but they have 
a positive and negative sign. So those are going to be negative 1. Because we have either a positive divided by a negative or a negative divided by a positive. But those numbers are going to be the same because um, those are the root 2 over 2s. So we have a couple points and we have asymptotes. Well, so to do this, we can look at, I'll look at the center one first. We're going to be asymptotic coming up from the negative. It's going to hit that, go through the zero and back up. And this is going to repeat every single time. So this green graph is what the tangent function looks like. It has asymptotes at every odd pi over 2, and it has zeros at every even pi over 2, so every like full pi, and it just repeats. Notice the period on this one isn't 2 pi, it's only 1 pi. So if we look again, this is one of our basic graphs, so we can Look at it, we have tangent, it's the domain, it's all real numbers except for those asymptotes, those odd multiples of pi over two. Uh, the range goes from negative infinity to infinity because we have those vertical asymptotes. Um, it's continuous on its domain, which is kind of misleading because I mean, it's not continuous, there's all these asymptotes, but where it actually exists, it's continuous. Um, what wouldn't be something like that? Like a piecewise function where we're going like that. Like the domain would be all real numbers, but it wouldn't be continuous on that domain. So it's continuous everywhere except for those asymptotes. Um, it's always increasing. You notice it starts and it goes up. It starts and it goes up. It starts and it goes up. Um, and um, it's symmetric with respect to the origin, so that that means it's odd, which just like the sine function, it means if you turn it upside down, it is the same exact thing. Um, it's not bounded above or below because it's going to and from negative infinity. Uh, there's no local maximums or minimums because again, it's going to infinity and it doesn't do like a cubic thing that looks like that. Um, no horizontal asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes are at the odd pi over twos. Um, the end behavior, just like sine cosine, doesn't exist because it's still periodic. It just isn't periodic in waves. Um, the transformations for this, um, we don't use the transformations as much because when we stretch it, it doesn't do much. Instead of that point being at 1, it'll be at a different number. Um, but uh, the big thing is the period. Instead of the period being 2 pi over b, the period is just pi over b because that initial period is just 1 pi. So, um, we can look at the cotangent. The cotangent is going to be very, very similar, being that the cotangent of x is just going to be cosine of x over sine of x. We can do the same basic thing. When cosine equals 0, the cotangent will be 0. So it'll be 0 there, 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 and there. And when sine equals 0, it'll have it's asymptotes. And now we can figure out where it's 1. It's 1 here, so that's 1, and negative 1 here. And so, and that'll be true for all of these if you, if you look. And so, this one, 
the cotangent is always decreasing. So the tangent was always increasing. The cotangent was always decreasing. Another way of looking at this, by the way, is that the cotangent of x is 1 over the tangent of x. So it's um, it's just a reciprocal of that tangent. Um, the domain, like it's everything except for the pi. So all the all the multiples of pi is where the asymptotes are. It's zeros at the odd pi over twos. Um, it is unbounded, like all the other stuff with tangent is the same with cotangent. Um, notice that the asymptotes moved over. With tangent, the asymptotes would have been like here and here. With cotangent, the asymptotes are here and here. So it moved over and it goes, it's decreasing instead of increasing. But other than that, the shape is really the same. Um, cosecant. Cosecant remember is one over sine of x. So we're gonna use the sine graph to help us look at this. So um, with the sine graph, one over that, so when sine is one, cosecant will be one. When sine is negative one, cosecant will be negative one. When sine is zero, one over zero is that asymptote. So we're gonna have asymptotes at all these pi values. And other than that, it's gonna be asymptotic. So it's gonna hit the maximum or minimum of sine, and then it's gonna go up. So it's gonna make a U. So it's going to look kind of like a quadratic, except that it's asymptotic. Like it won't go past there, it just gets steeper and steeper. Whereas a quadratic continues to expand outward. And then we go down, and then we go up, and then we go down, and then we go up, and then we go down. Um, so the domain, just like with tangent and cotangent. In fact, the domain here is the same as cotangent. It's everywhere except for the pi values. The range, the range is going to be from negative infinity to negative one and from one to infinity. Notice it doesn't hit anything in the middle there. Um, if we wanted to do something like 2 cosecant x uh, plus 3. What we would do is instead of start, starting with sine of x, like we did here, we would start with the graph of, I'll change color, start with the graph of 2 sine of x plus 3. You can always just change that cosecant into a sine, graph that, and then do the same thing. Where are the asymptotes? Where, where are the maximums and minimums? It'll always look like this, where it comes down, it hits the maximum, goes up. Um, the asymptotes are where sine equals zero, which if we had a vertical translation, let's say if we went plus one, we would graph it with sine plus one, and it would be where it hits that center line of one. Um, and so always start out with that sine graph, and then you can sketch that cosecant graph from the sine graph. Now, again, we're not really getting that in depth with a lot of the cosecant stuff, so there won't be too much craziness. Um, but in the future, if that's what you have to do, it's actually remarkably easy if you know how to graph sine. And then secant is going to be basically identical to cosine. Um, well, as far as cosecant was identical to sine, because we know that the secant of x is gonna be one over the cosine of x. So we would start with the cosine graph. We would make our maximums and minimums 
because they're going to be at the ones and the negative ones. The asymptotes are where they hit zero. So notice since the cosine is in the denominator again, this will have the same domain as the tangent function. So the asymptotes are at the odd pi over twos. And then you just make the u's. It's asymptotic, looks like cosecant, except that it's shifted over because cosine shifted over. So again, it doesn't go in between negative one and positive one. And uh, the domain is everything except for the asymptotes. Um, and so that's how we can graph the secant. So um, that is the basic graphs of the those other four. And again, we don't we don't get as crazy with these graphs as we do with the sine and cosine. Um, so uh, don't worry too much about that, but um, be able to recognize um, stretches and shifts and stuff like that. But you can do that if you had the secant graph. You could graph the cosine in the middle of it, just doing it backwards. You have the u's. Well, you can make the cosine so it hits the u's. Um, so, uh, but this is what we'll be working on. Uh, we'll see it in class, and I will see you in class. But until then, keep working problems, keep asking questions, and as always, happy mathing.